All right, so we saw stocks open higher to start this Tuesday trading session. We saw that inflation data in the U.S. well received and maybe setting the stage for the Fed to hit the pause button when it has a decision on interest rates tomorrow. You've seen a, a general risk on tone uh, that has included some of the technology stocks. It's also including oil with crude prices rallying today. But we know that energy has been under pressure for uh, weeks now, and that has hurt energy stock performance in Toronto. I want to get some perspective on all of that from Eric Nuttall, Senior Portfolio Manager at Nine Point Partners. Nice to see you. Good to be here. Uh, let's just start with, like, do you think the Fed is ready to say, OK, we're going to take a breather on rates this week? It, it feels that way. And it's it's been something that energy investors clearly have to be attuned to, because one of the biggest driving forces to inflation has been energy prices. And I think it was the, one of the motivating factors between, behind Biden using the strategic uh, political reserve last year, releasing over 260, almost 300 million barrels now. So this, this narrative around recession, recession due to inflation driving Fed uh, policy has really been the kind of like the boogeyman that we've been battling with. Because when you think about it, like I, I looked the part of the fool so far this year with oil hitting, I think it was a one year low yesterday, but why has it been so weak? Consistently when I speak to people that talk to crew traders, the guys trading the physical barrels, Consistently, they say they're the most bullish they've been in years and they're max long, but they're fighting against those using oil as an instrument to reflect their negative view on the economy, so CTAs and algo funds, etc. And that pool of capital is 30 times bigger than the guys trading the physical barrel. So it's this been narrative about high inflation, raising rates, eventual uh, uh, recession. The impact on oil demand that we've really been battling so far this year. Julie Fanzaris, who covers oil for, for Bloomberg, was saying something similar yesterday that, and, and, and arguably you could even tie it back to equities. You know, the bearish strategists coming in this year have had to, in some cases, reverse that because of this rip roaring rally in technology yes. stocks. And it it feels a bit uncomfortable, I think, to some people now <laughs> that you've had one sector that has had these outsized gains. It certainly feels uncomfortable to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but been, you're not changing your tune, really. I'm not. So, so evaluate the merits of my case. And that is, we clearly do not yet, at least, have a demand problem. Demand's been running uh, up 1.8 million barrels per day so far this year. Uh, Jeff Curry likes to remind us that you know demand is so terrible that the IEA has have to upwardly revise their demand forecast every single month since November of last year. So demand has not been the issue. But he's, and, and just for context, he's, his firm just lowered their expectations, I they think, did. for a third time or something. Yeah, so they, they, they load their oil forecasts to about $81 WTI to the end of, the, end of this year. Okay. So I think the challenge has been China reopening hasn't been living up to extraordinarily lofty expectations. So it's been good, but not like phenomenal. We've been dealing with more Russian barrels than I think most people thought. Most people would have thought the production would roll due to sanctions, plus Russia said they were going to be cutting. Up until about two weeks ago, that was not the case. I've had a, an army of consultants through uh, my office, whether it's Jan Stewart at Piper, Rystad Energy Aspects, Sanford Bernstein, and they're all tracking Russian production now finally down about 500 to 700,000 barrels per day. So it's been, you know, demand's fine. Supply's been a little bit higher, but I, I revert back to... You look at how much fear is in the market, how awful, like absolutely horrible sentiment is. We fell more on a fictitious story about a, a deal between the United States and Iran. We were going to get up to a million barrels per day of exports. This was Friday of last week. Yeah, I remember that. So we fell like four bucks. We're having an actual production cut of a million barrels per day from Saudi Arabia, whom they strongly desire. And I think they, this voluntary cut of a million barrels per day just from them will persist through the year. We fell more on, on vapor than we did on actual reality. So it speaks to just how horrible sentiment is. We see that improving in the coming couple of weeks to month. Weeks to month, because I remember last time we had a conversation, because it's, it's been a challenging year, yes. you know, over the last you know, few weeks, every time we, we check in with you, I still felt like your, your key message was you have to be looking at this over the next few years as opposed to sort of, you know, winning the argument in mm -hmm. 2023 per se. We need a shock to the paper market so strong that it overwhelms th this narrative around recession. We continue to believe that it's going to be drawing from inventories. That should be starting in, in a couple of weeks' time. So that's a due to a few things. China normalization, seasonal uptick in demand. But most importantly, we have the cut from OPEC plus voluntary combined with this extra million barrel per day Saudi cut. Our math says that July and August, we're going to fall by about 100 million barrels in each of those months, and we're going to fall by almost 400 million barrels 
for the second half of this year. So you can't look at the first half of this year yeah. as your playbook for the second half. Can I just ask, uh, Mike McGlone, who's a strategist with, with Bloomberg, yeah. uh, by comparison, quite bearish. I think yes. he's talked about crude getting to like 50 bucks or something like that. And he says that Saudi Arabia and, and OPEC Plus in general just has less influence than uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that the U.S. is producing so much as well. Right. Thoughts? I would disagree with, with, okay. with Mike. So I think if you challenge his playbook, demand is beating what he has been saying. U.S. supply, we think, will be growing this year, as it has, but that rate of growth is significantly moderating. And in fact, Saudi has more influence and OPEC has more influence, not less. Maybe not on a day-to-day, -day, but when we look out in the coming quarters, the world is going to be completely reliant on OPEC in terms of production growth. And therefore, it's up to them to determine when they bring on this excess capacity. We're almost out of time, but I had teased before the break that Synovus is one of the stocks you like. Can you just walk us through a couple of names that you like the most yeah. right now? So I'm most bullish on Canadian heavy oil. You know, you don't have to believe in a hundred dollar oil tank, for not even 90, you know, 75 to 80. The amount of free cash flow these companies are generating is epic. Just in the month of May, oil is at you know, a measly $71. The buybacks of the energy sector were 27% of all buybacks in Canada. It's over 700 million bucks, and that's at 71. So when we look at a name like a Synovus at $80 oil, we've got them trading at a 20% free cash flow yield next year, meaning they could pay a 20% dividend or buy back 20% of their stock effectively privatizing in five years. We think this sector re-rates to a 10% free cash flow yield. Therefore, that would be a doubling in Synovus' stock and in many of the Canadian heavy oil names that we see. We look at the world, we scour, we look at gas, services, oil, every jurisdiction, and yet when you look at what will investors want when sentiment finally does improve, you want long dated reserves, low declines, epic amounts of free cash flow, and a commitment to return that back to us. So it's a name I've, I've mentioned several times before. We just have to be patient to let the thesis play out. Okay.